Yo, 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 welcome back to Nine Works TV. Uh, I'm in my 40th anniversary, as you can probably tell. So, following on from a nocturnal nightmare that I described on a recent episode of Nine Works Radio, uh, I'm on my way to Paragon Porsche currently, where I bought this car from. Uh, I need a new part for my key, which is covered completely under Paragon's fantastic warranty, so it's great to be able to call on that with confidence. So, as I said, I'm en route to Paragon, the part itself uh, is going to be a genuine Porsche part. Mark Sumter, who runs Paragon, has invited me to uh, call into Paragon, but then to go to Porsche Tunbridge myself to collect the part in a special car. We'll find out what that's going to be once we get to Paragon. <laughs> Dropping off the anniversary, I wandered into the showroom to figure out which of these cars in Paragon stock might be a candidate for my promised special drive. The answer, unbelievably, was right in front of me. Mark's very own 993 GT2. So began the most memorable drive for a number of reasons. Not even going anywhere yet, and <laughs> I am sweating. I'm sweating for two reasons. Number one, this is air cooled. Number two, is a, it's a GT2. In previous videos, I said there were three Porsche 911s out of all of them that I'm not driven. It's actually four because I'm yet to drive the 992 RS but in terms of non-new stuff there are three. The Porsche GT1, the 1968 911L and then the 993 GT2. Thanks to Mark's kindness, outrageous kindness, uh, I get to tick off one of those today en route to Porsche Tunbridge. So this car was produced to homologate Porsche's race car for GT2 racing. Uh, built between model years 1996 and 1998. There are just 172 of these created for worldwide markets. In terms of right-hand drive, of course this is a left hookup, but in terms of right-hand drive, there were 15. The GT2 basically takes some of the 993 Turbo concept, melds it with some of the 993 Carrera RS concept to give you the GT2. Now, Technically, that's not particularly accurate, but top level, that's kind of what it is. To dive into it a little bit more, it does take the 993 Turbo as its base, so that's the, the wide body, the twin turbo charge, 3.6 litre, flat six engine, six speed manual gearbox, albeit there are a lot of changes. And the result of all of those changes is, this GT2 is considerably lighter, substantially more powerful, noticeably faster and quicker, which we will explore later on in the video. Let's deal with the weight. So an 3 Turbo is round about 1500 kilos. The GT2 saves over 200 kilos. That is not an insignificant amount of weight. By uh, ditching power to the front wheels, the turbo was all wheel drive, don't forget. The rear seats are deleted, a hell of a load of insulation is deleted, electric mirrors have all been ditched, and the doors, incidentally, are made of lightweight aluminium. The thing is with the GT2 is even in this day and age where we've got GT3 RSs with bicep packs, big vents in, uh, in the front and silly wings on the back, this car still looks unbelievably awesome. The engine is up on power, it's still the 993 Turbo at its base, albeit with some serious reworking. Power is up from 402 to 430 horsepower. In later iterations it rise to 450. In this day and age, 430 horsepower doesn't sound like a lot, but again, in a car that's extremely lightweight, paired back, um, no driver aids, it's mind warping. The gearbox, as I said, is six speed. It's taken from the 993 Turbo. The ratios are actually the same as the 993 Turbo. The brakes as well, they are carried over from the 993 Turbo. They're the big red brakes that uh, the Turbo has made famous, of course. From there though, there are a lot of differences. Most notably, aesthetically, the arches. The turbo's metal arches have been cut off. 
with some plastic arches added, and they are bolted on, and they're there for two reasons. The first thing is the arches are wider to accommodate huge 11 inch wide by 18 speed lines, lightweight speed lines of course, uh, at the back of the car. And the other reason is again, in this car not hiding and not ashamed of its motorsport intentions, the idea is in motorsport where you get prangs, the arches can be replaced quickly. It's probably the most iconic design trait of the 903 GT2 and it's actually never been repeated bizarrely from Porsche in a road car. You can just tell this car wants to go. Even the slightest application of the gas pedal and this car is ready to lunge forward. I'm excited to give it the full beam shortly. I obviously want to stay well away from any curbs with these speed lines. I said they're 11 inches wide on the back, they're 8 inches on the front. For an air-cooled car it is a wide footprint and actually you do really feel it I have to say. What I will say is this thing is lovely to drive on the road actually and it's not at all as scary as I was anticipating. Really nice, fairly lightweight to the clutch. The gear shift as I said is super smooth. Um, the steering is power assisted, it's nice and light. The steering wheel position and the seating position in fact is lovely. It's really nice, it's really nice. <laughs> Are joking me, brilliant. I've gone wrong again. I'm not doing it on purpose, Mark. I promise. Jaguar, I think I saw that earlier. Even just squeeze the accelerator there, and I can feel the car sitting back on its hind legs. This thing definitely wants to go. I can't wait to unleash these ponies. Let's be quick. Ah, Porsche Tunbridge. There we go. There we go. After getting lost twice in the excitement of driving a 1.2 million pound classic Porsche, I had indeed arrived. So I popped into Porsche Tunbridge for a quick look around before collecting the parts I had waiting for me. Lovely jubbly. So, got my part for the anniversary. Let's head back to Paragon. The long way, because I want to put my foot down a bit now we've explored this car, find out exactly what it's all about. Suspension can best be described as 993 cup. So it's stiffened, the chassis stiffened, suspension is stiffened. Jesus, absolute wet. Classic turbocharged 911s are so different to the modern day stuff. Modern day, you put your foot down, maximum torque delivered usually from below, uh, beneath 2000 RPM and will carry that through right the way past five grand. With the older stuff, the delivery is so much more linear, it's so much more engaging. This is the same, much like the 903 Turbo, but just so much more brutal. But then what this also has, oh, okay. <laughs> the power delivery is savage to be honest with you but again as I mentioned it's got that linearity to it it builds it doesn't just give you everything straight away say you have to tease it out wouldn't be accurate but oh my god once the Taco goes past 4,000 RPM, the red line, by the way, is 6,800 RPM. Once the Taco goes past 12 o'clock, which is 4,000 RPM, this thing just takes off. Okay, and now it's raining, which is exactly what you don't want when driving a rear wheel drive, twin turbocharged, lightweight Porsche with no traction control. So I am just going to take it a little bit easy. That torque in the top half of the Taco is just absolutely explosive. Explosive. It's definitely a ballsy thing to drive fast, there's no doubt about it. It moves around a lot and I'm very aware the wheelbase is short. If it's going to go, 
you're not going to have a lot of time to save it. This is no one trick pony, it's not all about the torque. The chassis on this oh, is amazing and just as pleasing to experience as the power from that flat six. It does make it playful. I can see how it could become too playful too quickly, uh, but I'm not about to test where that limit is today, of course. I can literally see, when I put my foot down, the nose of the car raise up. I can see less road ahead of me. Kind of reminds me of the 959 in that way, but that thing's four-wheel drive and has traction control. The gearing actually is quite long, but especially when the turbos kick in, you're reaching such speeds so quickly that you're changing up, um, it feels almost instantly. But actually, you can kind of feel the 993 turbo influence on the gearing. And actually, it kind of plays into its brilliance. I mean, make no mistake, you know, this is a car built for Le Mans. And yet here I am driving it in relative peace on the A21. I'm gonna turn off here. And it's, it's relatively quiet, it's pleasant. That is honestly, that is outrageous. I'm trying to picture what this thing was like in the mid 90s. Ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. I am tiptoeing a little bit here, viewers, because I'm just very aware of the conditions, but, oh my God, I am loving it. That's the other thing I noticed when cornering and I drove a 993 Carrera C2 recently from Jonathan Franklin, so it's fairly recent or recent enough to compare. And I mean, this thing does feel wide and uh, that wider track width and wider wheels, it definitely correlates to a much flatter cornering ability, which does allow you to push a bit. But again, you've just got to get it right. Okay, so, I appear to have gone wrong again. I promise you I'm not doing this on purpose. It's just difficult to do a road test when you don't know where you're going. And uh, yeah, I've gone completely in the wrong direction and I'm hit in some sort of high street, which is exactly a game where I don't want to be. So where does this sit then? Well, a lot of people look to the 993 Carrera RS as perhaps the pinnacle of the air-cooled 911 era, simply because it represents the constant evolution of the 911 from its uh, inception in 1963 in that 130 horsepower, flat six naturally aspirated form that it was. But the RS, in true RS fashion, has achieved that by taking things away. I almost think it's too easy to come to that conclusion. I do therefore think that this car is the ultimate 911 from the air-cooled era, simply because, I mean, not only has it taken things away, but this melds absolutely everything from that same period altogether. Uh, the evolution of engineering, uh, the purity, the lightweightness, but also the turbocharging, which again, is a massive part of Porsche history. To offer all of that in a car which is sensational to drive, this is it. This is absolutely the pinnacle of Luftgekult in my eyes. And this, don't forget, is a car with its roots firmly in motorsport, tamed just enough for road use. Which is just as well, because right as I was finishing filming and heading back to base, Poseidon himself decided to throw one last test at me and the GT2. This was a proper thunderstorm. The lightning, a fair reflection of the drama felt from within the GT2's cabin as I realised I just needed to get this car home and pronto. It made for an interesting finale to what is without doubt one of my most memorable 911 drives of all time. And with that, I need to finish by saying thank you to Mark for the outrageous experience in the pinnacle of Luft. <laughs>